Okay, well, thank you again for joining us. Um, this is our uh, third installment of our online accessibility workshops. And today we're gonna be focusing on captioning your own videos and emphasis on the own because um, if you are the author of the video, then you have full uh, capabilities of captioning it yourself. If you are looking to have another video caption that captioned rather that was made by another person um, then you will need to obtain permission from that person or at least attempt to maintain permission and I can certainly help you with that as well um, but today we're going to be talking about your own material so I'm going to start out with showing you a PowerPoint presentation that just can kind of is a summary and then I'm going to um, demonstrate for you how I would caption one of my own videos and then I had emailed uh, Ed, I'm sorry that you didn't get this, <laughs> but um, some of you I had emailed you, if you wanted to um, upload one of your own videos to YouTube, you'll have an opportunity today to work on captioning that because we won't be going for the whole hour. So, um, okay. So first of all, oh, my slide is not... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to move to my next, oh, there we go. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's it, uh, exactly. Um, so, and again, I'll do my best to, to uh, verbalize any questions that we get so that folks that are listening can hear it. Um, so what we're going to cover today are um, sort of a nutshell of captioning legal requirements and then moving into captioning your own video material. So legal requirements. Um, Generally speaking, the college would would uh, prefer that you do not show it in class or post it on Canvas unless it is captioned. Um, that's the prevailing wisdom surrounding um, captioning as, as it stands right now, according to law. Um, that is what we would like to see. Um, I certainly understand that, especially for face-to-face -face classes, sometimes you will do a lecture cast or for math classes they do something called a pen cast um, where you want to put it up right away maybe you had a face-to-face -face class that day and then you want to put up your lecture that evening in case anyone missed class we'll get to that in just a sec um, I have done a lot of inquiry about this subject um, amongst colleagues all over and there's kind of differing opinion on this but the majority of what I've been able to glean is that you can post that um, even if you have not captioned it yet if it's for a self-contained self -contained class and you don't have any students that you are aware have requested captions. Um, DSS we do our best to notify you if we know of a student in your class that's going to need captions who's deaf or hard of hearing. Um, we don't always know um, if they're coming because they may change their schedule without telling us or they might just add late or you know things of that nature. Um, but I certainly don't want to discourage anyone from using lecture casts in their class um, because they feel the captioning is too burdensome. Um, but if it is fully online, if your class is fully online, uh, you do need to caption it before you post it um, because some of your students you may not even be aware have a hearing impairment they may be at home they may be in another state for all you know um, so I wouldn't be doing my job if I said sure you know go ahead and <laughs> throw something up there without captioning it I want you to to rely on captioning um, because it really makes it more equitable for everybody. I use captions. I, I put turn captions on whenever I'm watching something um, because I find it helps me and I don't have any verified hearing impairment, although I might have one. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then this last bullet point, um, always have a captioning plan in place in case you do suddenly find that you need to caption your material. That could be captioning it yourself, that could be going through DSS, um, because we can ha handle all the captioning processes for you. The reason I'm glad that you're here right now is because the, the more that you can do ahead of time on your own, the less stress it will be for you, the less stress it will be for us and for the student because they will already have access to that information right away. Um, now Ed, you had a question.
Okay. So the question is, um, Ed here in our audience uses PDFs that have images and then, because I'm seeing it on your screen here, and then underneath that you have notes or um, the written out descriptions. Uh, and the question is, is that sufficient? Uh, because you go back after the fact and record an audio version of yourself reading those notes off of the screen. I would say that is totally acceptable if what you're, um, if what you're saying in lecture I, you just want to make sure that it's an equitable experience. Okay, so then I would say that you're fine, and he replied that yes it is. Um, so I would say you're fine. We do run into issues sometimes where an instructor will post a PowerPoint, um, or they'll do like a like a screencast of, of running through a PowerPoint presentation, and they'll say, well, I, I provide notes to the students as well. But what ends up happening is sometimes when they're explaining the PowerPoint, they end up going into more detail about certain aspects that aren't necessarily in the notes, and then obviously some information is lost. But that doesn't sound like your situation. So I would say you're, you're fine. Um, oh, okay, so that's all I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah. Right, S right, so, sure, sure, absolutely, I mean, that's what they signed up for. So the, the comment was, um, for, for people listening, is, you know, <laughs> there's some hesitation about putting everything up, right, because you want people to come to class, you want to incentivize them to come to class, which I totally understand. Um, I would look at it from the perspective like um, that you're just providing it as, as like a review tool and you can certainly give um, incentive for coming to class like with points or, or whatever um, or you know you could say if, if you um, if it's a face-to-face -face class if you would like the captioned version you know let me know and I can you know but um, I would I wouldn't worry too much about that I mean uh, there's other ways you can incentivize, but I, I can understand. Um, so we're going to move away from the legal requirement right now. Um, I've been told by other people, uh, Carrie, you should be more heavy-handed about this. You know, it's very important, and it is important, and I, I want to impart that to you wholeheartedly. But I also don't want anyone to feel like they should be held back um, creatively because of captioning. It doesn't have to be hard, and I'm hoping that from today's demonstration, you'll see that it really can be quite easy. Svetlana, question. So the, another great question. So yes, so Svetlana asked, um, is a transcript sufficient? Yes, a transcript is sufficient. It, again, if it's mirroring what you said, um, that would be fine. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not ideal because um, <laughs> It, for a video, you know, a lot of times in terms of, y yeah, it's important to, s if it's, it might be out of sync or they're having to look at the transcript and then look at the video. Like for mine, um, the video I'm going to show you as a demonstration, I'm moving my mouse around on the screen and you really got to kind of follow where I'm going. And so if I'm looking at a transcript and looking at that, it, it's not an ideal situation. Um, it's better than nothing, but I would say, um, a transcript is, is really super fine if it's just a talking head video. So like if it's you, just, hi, I'm Svetlana and I'm your professor and um, and there's really nothing else they need to glean from that image, you know. But if it's like where you're showing them a process, captioning really is more ideal. Good question. Okay, I'm going to take a sip of water. <laughs> I don't know why I told everybody that. <laughs> They're like, what's that strange sound in the microphone? I feel like Marco Rubio, remember that? Anyway, okay. That was a bad joke. Okay. <laughs> Captioning your own video material. So um, I've kind of coined this snappy phrase to just show how cool this can be. I like to call it the ASR method, and I'm going to patent that and make a lot of money. Um, Auto transcribe, sync review. Yeah, and, and all of you will be included in that as well. Auto transcribe sync review. So what does that mean? Well, in YouTube, which, okay, let me back up for, for just a second. So the, I'll, show, I'll take you through the process I use. What I'm doing right now is I'm screencasting what you're seeing 
using a program called Screencast-O-Matic, which if you've ever had a, a workshop with Neil Scapura, he's probably mentioned it. I think he secretly works for them, but I don't have any proof of that. Mario works for oh, Mario. <laughs> Yeah, so Mario Tejada as well. I do not work for Screencast-O-Matic, I promise you, but I do like their service. So it's a free screencasting program that is just on a website. You create an account. You are limited to 15-minute recordings, um, which for some of us isn't an issue. Uh, we like to package our instruction into those small chunks, um, which pedagogically speaking, you know, people recommend. Um, I am long-winded. <laughs> So I tend to go more than 15 minutes, such as today. And so if you pay, I, when I did this, it was $15, um, which was a year ago. But I it can't be much more than that now. Um, and you get that for a whole year for unlimited time. So it's really not that big of an investment. Um, and they have editing features and things. But it's very easy to use. And then what I do is I upload the video to my YouTube account, which also is free. Um, and then I do my uh, auto transcribe, syncing, and reviewing from directly within YouTube. And so that's what I'm going to take you through today. So um, the, the subsequent slides are really screenshots of the process that you would go through to caption your material on YouTube. Um, instead of showing you screenshot after screenshot, I'm just going to take you through the process live. Um, but I am going to be putting this um, PowerPoint up on the website so that people can refer to it later on. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is go into my YouTube account. And I have already uploaded a video to my channel. My daughter likes to watch these toy reviews. <laughs> and my son watches train videos. So you can get a glimpse into uh, my world here. OK, so this is my personal YouTube channel, Accessibility at Diablo Valley College. And um, I'm going to go over to. Um, let's see. Oh, I'm sorry, my Creator Studio. Blanking out a little bit there. And um, within your Creative Studio, or Creator Studio, you have a whole list of all your films or your videos. So um, I'm going to come down to the one that I was going to use for a demonstration today. And that is sample video for adding captions. So um, you would click on the video you want to add captions to. And then come over to subtitles slash CC. And by the way, a video showing you this same process is also on the website under module 5. So if you want to watch the video again, you can do that. OK, so once I have clicked on subtitles slash CC, um, I will come down here to where it says published. Now, I have already made attempts to caption this um, for demonstration purposes. That's why it's showing all of these drafts and recovered edits and all that, that stuff. But what you want to look for is um, English parentheses automatic. And that will always show up, even if you've add, added no subtitles or captions or whatever. That is standard. And what that tool does is it, if you click it, it will generate an, um, an auto-transcribed transcript of all of the words you have said in your video. Now, some of us um, have really good YouTube voices, and it does a very good job of recognizing us. Others of us um, maybe don't, which is fine. Um, so there's a couple of strategies you can use here. but for the purposes of our workshop today, I'm going to assume that it's going to like my voice. Um, and it's not perfect. If any of you have ever watched a YouTube video and turned on the automatic captioning, it will get some things right, maybe. Um, but most of the time, it gets it wrong. And so we're sort of using that tool to our advantage, but we're going to go in and, and, and um, fix it. So I'm going to click on English Automatic. and. Once I have done that, I should see on the left-hand side um, time-stamped text. 
that corresponds with my video. Now notice it's rather grayed out. I can't do anything to it as of yet. So I'm going to come over to my edit button and it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite existing subtitles. I do want to overwrite them because I want to edit them and make sure they're correct. Um, so I'm going to click overwrite and now my time stamped text on the left hand side is not gray and it's able to be manipulated. So underneath your video you will also see a, a timeline of sorts that shows um, what text is going to correspond with the certain section of your video. So what I do at this point is I'll, I'll just start playing the video and I'll just listen and I'll see what text is being shown at that time and um, that will give me an indication of if I need to make any corrections or not. So let's listen to this. Um, let's see, I hope that this is going to play. In this video I'm going to show you how to add alternate text to an image in Word 2016. So I know you can't hear that. <laughs> it's playing through my computer so I think our, our listeners can hear it. But um, let me go back to the beginning. In this video I'm going to show you how to add alternate text to an image in Word 2016. Okay, so right off the bat I notice it doesn't do any punctuation, it doesn't capitalize anything, um, but it's done pretty well. Now if I want to make any edits, it's so simple. All I have to do is go over to the particular text box and I can make any changes and you'll notice that the changes automatically show up on the video screen. Um, Okay, Word 2016, so then I would want a period after that, and then I'll want to capitalize first. Um, <clears throat> and so then you go through the video and in you Word listen, and you can hear it first obviously thing you better want to do when it's once on your, your image own is inserted, is to right or select the image, and then right click on it, and then go down to Format Picture. So oftentimes when we're narrating, um, we find that we misspeak and then we will adjust what we said and kind of take strange pauses and things like that. This gives you the opportunity to edit that kind of stuff out. You can take out ums. YouTube actually does a pretty good job if you say uh, it won't caption that. It'll just not write it. Yeah, and I say so constantly. Did I, did we joke around about that last week? Okay, maybe with somebody else, but yeah, so is my number one word when making videos, and it's really annoys me, but I can take those out if I want to, and like in this line, I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to add alternate text to an image in Word 2016. First thing you want to do once your image is inserted is to write, if select the image. Okay, so that's obviously not correct. Um, what I had actually said in the video was, the first thing you want to do once your image is inserted is to write and then I realized I was wrong and then I said select the image. So I can just literally take out these words and then it's smooth when I replay it. In this video I'm going to show you how to add alternate text to an image in Word 2016. First thing you want to do once your image is inserted is to write or select the image and then right click so on you, it. So I listening to it will hear me fumble there, but the person reading the captions won't notice. It'll seem very very streamlined. Question Ed. Can you take the text out and use it in an Um you can you can cut that audio part out. Yeah, YouTube has um in the Creator Studio there's editing features where you can slice out a little piece. So good question. Um, yeah. Well, actually, so and I, I wish you could hear this because it's actually kind of adjusts itself to. Yeah, it's it's a very sophisticated. No, no, no. And and keep in mind the person listening. Oops. <laughs> I just kicked a, a cord back here. The person listening to it, you know, they're not. Th as long as there's text up on the screen, they're gonna they're not gonna wonder like what's going on, you know. Um, one thing that I do in this video um, is I part of the video is where it's playing what the screen is saying. So <clears throat> in that instance, what I would do in my caption is I I would write in the caption computer audio playing, so that the listener knows. Um, 
it's not me talking anymore, it's the computer talking. You know, you just want to like kind of give them a sense of, of what's going on in the video. Or like if, if someone shouts and that's part of what you want to convey, you know, you say person shouting or something like, yeah. A lot of times I'll do um, little stars, two stars on either side of it. Like for example, let me go down. Um, okay, actually I do, I guess I don't have an example in this video, but um, just just think of it from the perspective of someone that, that can't hear it. What are the relevant sounds you want them to be aware of? And then, and then um, you get used to doing it really simply. So editing the text is very easy, as uh, hopefully it appears. And then if you want to adjust the timings or the syncing of the text, um, again, YouTube does a pretty good job of syncing the text with, with when you're saying the words. But if you find that you've made edits and you want to adjust that, if you come down below your video, you'll notice on either side of each text box are handles. And you can simply just drag it or move the whole thing. Um, and then that will adjust when it's being played. And it, you can slide this bar and then play it again. It and that right, will show you select the image and, and uh, then right -click when on the it. text is, is appearing. And then, and then obviously you can hear when it's being picture. said. So you can tell right away, oh, you that is synced that nicely. Right the screen, or I need to the adjust that. Picture menu. Um, are there any questions about that? Because, this, again, it's a pretty relatively simple process, really, especially if you have it do the auto transcribe. Um, when you are done, editing all your text, if you just click Save Changes, that's going to save it. And then if you embed the URL or the embed code anywhere, it's going to have those captions attached to it. And someone can turn them on and turn them off at will. Um, you also, once something has captions, you also can um, print out a transcript of all the words and hand that out to people. Some people like to do that as like a study element um, for students to take home with them. Uh, so that's just another good tool. Um, now if, I'm going to delete this draft because I want to show you another uh, method of doing this if if you find that you don't have a good YouTube voice or or you speak with an accent or, or for whatever reason. Um, so we're going to go back to the video as it was when it was born. And um, I'm going to click on, well, I already clicked on subtitle CC. But this time, instead of just going to the automatic, I'm going to click Add New Subtitles or CC. And it'll ask you to pick the predominant language. And I'm, I guess I'm just going to discard the published subtitles. OK, and here you have a few options. You can upload a file if you already have a captioned file, a, a caption file generated, like an S, SRT file or a VTT file. Most people don't have that, so I'm not going to tell you to worry about it. Although if you did do a video in Camtasia and you have a caption file from there, you can upload that into YouTube. Um, but what I'm going to do Let's say I have an accent, and a lot of times YouTube gets me so wrong that I just don't even want to deal with its auto transcription tool. I can click transcribe and auto sync. This process takes slightly longer, but again, um, some of you might find that you prefer it. So what you do in this instance is you um, will see here, it says video transcript. Type everything that's spoken in the video here, then click set timings to automatically line up your text with the speech in the video. So I could click play, and I know you won't hear any of this. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to add alternate. Okay. I'm typing. Okay. <laughs> so, if you could, if you were standing right where I'm standing, when I pressed play, I would have heard my video sound, and then I type what I'm hearing. Now, whenever I start to type, YouTube will stop the video and let you type. And then the minute I pause my typing for a few seconds, it will start again. So it's kind of nice because you can you can get the words out, and then it'll pick up again. You type that, then you pick it up again. So that. That actually um, isn't too terribly uh, uh, 
laborious either. Um, and then once you, and you don't have to worry about paragraph or, um, you know, going to a new line, you just straight up type what you hear. And then once you have all of your text in this box, you would click set timings. And I only have one sentence here, but um, I'm gonna click set timings. And it's gonna use its syncing tool. Um, and it says setting timings over here. It, it'll, I have noticed that YouTube will say setting timings dot 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 for a long time. Um, and one time I did a video that was an hour long and I thought, whoa, I wonder how long it's going to take to set the timings. And then I, um, uh, after like two hours, I thought, well, it must be done. So I clicked on it and hit it, it was done already. And then the next time I did that, I clicked it after like 10 seconds and it was already done too. So it, it just says setting timings. So you feel like you're afraid to click on it, but it's usually done. So I'm going to click on this. And it is done. <clears throat> and so you can see here on the left hand side, I have uh, my text. And I'm going to press play and see how it syncs up. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add alternate text to an image in Word 2016. Hmm. OK. First it actually did a bad job. <laughs> I don't know if you can see how long this one is. I have, um, huh, that's interesting. Maybe I should have let it have a little more time. What do you think? I, I think I was a little too anxious there. So, but this is a good demonstration to show you how easy it is <laughs> to adjust these boxes. <gasps> okay. So, think. <laughs> I'm just going to stretch this out across the whole thing. So, Cheryl has a great point, and Ed concurs that it's probably looking at my whole one minute one second video and thinking okay so you just want to take this these two this one sentence stretch it out over the whole video good point good point okay we're gonna go with that but, <laughs> but I'm sure that's what it's thinking is there you go okay so we have solved the mystery so theoretically you would have a lot more text to this um, but you can at adjust the the um, boxes if you want to and then again and type a whole bunch more and see here under these these text boxes you have a plus sign so you can add uh, text in manually that way as well or you can delete if you um, want to get rid of one and then again you would just click save changes um, another what method you can do which I probably don't think anyone will do but I guess it's worth mentioning um, you can also um, not have it auto sync and just create new subtitles outright and sync them yourself. Um, oh, this must be, huh, I'm not sure what happened here. Um, so again, that probably is your most time consuming method. Um, let's see, let me try that again. Create new subtitles or CC. Yeah, it's showing all these things on the left. So that's that's interesting. Um, usually it will be blank and you will go in then and, and add it all your own and then sync it yourself and everything, which is fine. It's just you're going to find the method that works best for you. I find that doing the, because it tends to recognize my voice pretty well, that doing the auto transcribe and syncing and reviewing, review is key, is is works for me. Any questions about that? Okay. Um, and you know on YouTube you can make a video um, private, you can make it unlisted, if you know, so just because it's on YouTube doesn't mean the whole world can see it. I want to share with you, I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. Um, let's go through all these slides and we'll get to the, there's uh, one other thing I want to mention. Okay, so there is also a service called Amara, which is a website, and there's a link to it from this PowerPoint. Um, you can't see it on this your screen up here for the audience, um, but the Amara logo is a link, and it's I think it's just Amara.org. I could be wrong about that, but um, it's a free captioning site that uses the same um, 
transcribe sync review model method that I was showing you, but it also um, is a crowdsourcing model. So what it what that means is that you when you create an Amara account and you upload your video to it, that video gets its own. Thank you very much, Ed. That video gets its own web page, um, which is essentially public, and then you could send that to whoever you want if you want them to be able to contribute to your captions. Like for instance, maybe you know someone that speaks Spanish and you want to caption it into Spanish. You could have them do that. Um, they don't need any specific account. They just need to know the URL. And then any changes they make will be saved to the um, to the video. I, I do know of instructors also that tend to generate a lot of videos and they feel rather overwhelmed with the amount of captioning that they have to do and sometimes they will create they'll put the video on Amara and offer students extra credit for captioning the video because again you just go in and work on it and a little out of time and save it so that's another option um, one thing to know about Amara is that it is designed to be an open and public resource so technically someone if they knew what they were doing or, or really wanted to they could go and find the video. So that is one drawback if, if, if that's a concern of yours so just letting you know about that. Um, oh and, and also one more note about Amara if you've ever made a video on Canvas like using the Canvas recorder and then try to caption that they use they contract with Amara so it will direct you to Amara to caption your canvas video okay another option so I've been talking about how to do this yourself um, now what I want to move towards is showing you how someone else can do it for you which is also nice <laughs> so being in the California Community Colleges, we have access to a service called 3C Media Solutions. And again, this is a link to it. It has a lady arranging flowers, which is pretty. Um, so let me show you their site. And I realize you can't see it right now, so give me one moment. Okay, let's see. Okay. Yikes, I wonder what this is. Oh, Sierra College Monster Mash. Okay. <laughs> like, what's going on at Sierra College? So, <laughs> 3C Media Solutions is very a very easy service. Again, it's free. Um, the, the Chancellor's Office pays for it. And you can create an account. I'm going to log in, and I sincerely hope that I remember my login. Um, that's the age-old conundrum. Okay, let's see. Yay, okay, that was it. Okay, so you create an account and then um, you can upload videos. So I'm gonna go into media and this will show anything that I've uploaded to my account, which in this case is only one thing. Um, and so I'm gonna click on that video. And below this, I have lots of options. Um, I can edit video title, uh, post the video, but the thing that I want to show you is submit this video for captioning and if I click that link you know it has a bunch of instructions it says it can take three to five business days um, I have that's what they say and if it's a super long video it can certainly take that long we have gotten things back the next day when we send things to them if it's a shorter video um, you know so that's just sort of a guideline um, What was I just going to say? Oh, keep in mind this is a person doing it, so which is good. It won't you won't have to worry about um, them running it through machine captioning and and there being problems with that. Um, so uh, to submit your video, it's simple. You just provide a title, the approximate length, and then you do have to put in whatever section number it's tied to. Because again, because of the funding structure, we need to prove that it is part of a class or for a class. Um, and then in the transcriber notes, if there's any like real technical terms you use, like maybe like Latin terms for an anatomy class or something, you might just want to add in some notes to help whoever it is 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 captioning your your video. And then you submit it and they send you back, they email you back your video and it's just got the captions on it. So you just do what you want with it at that point. Very, very helpful service. Okay, let me go back. 
Um, let's see. I think if you, I, you know what, that's a good question. I, every time I've sent something to them, it, it's, they've accepted it. Yeah, I don't, I think any of your, our normal video, you know, like MP4, I think would be fine. Yes, so they'll want to know, um, they'll, when you create your account is when you mention where you're from. So, but that's fine. I mean, you can have, excuse me, you can have one account for all, for all of your videos though, because I know you teach that at Solano as well. And that's fine because this is for the entire system. So don't worry about that. Okay. Um, and then last but not least, um, this is, for those of you who haven't heard of it yet, this is um, a link to our new online accessibility DVC webpage um, where you can find more information about what I've talked about. And I will show you um, here. This is the product of the year-long sabbatical. Um, there are six modules and they're designed to be self-paced. Um, Sorry, I'm having a little runny nose. And module five deals specifically with accessible audio and video. And so the process that I've outlined for you, you'll find here um, underneath the video and multimedia content section. And this goes into more detail. What are captions? <laughs> Why should we use them? Um, oh, and also, if you want to search, let's say that um, you're not making your own video, it's you want to use one from someone else, but you want to make sure it's been captioned by a human. Because every video on YouTube will say it's captioned. If you click the CC button, captions will come up, but they'll most likely be auto-generated. So if you want to ensure that the video you're finding on YouTube was done by a human, it's simple. All you have to do is add in your search term, like in this case, volcanoes, comma, CC. And then any search result that comes up will be, um, someone has identified that that is a captioned file or captioned video, I should say. Google is similar. Um, you can do a video search and then only pick closed captioned videos. So I highly encourage you if, you, if you're like, well, I know I'm gonna teach on that subject next week and maybe I'll go on YouTube and see if I can find a video for that. Make sure it's a captioned one. And then below that, um, this link, how to caption your own YouTube videos, takes you through the process that we just all did together. And I have a video, a captioned video <laughs> of, the, of the video to show you how to caption. What do you think about that? <laughs> Let's see how many layers we can put on top of this. Um, so that's that's the process, and I hope you'll, you'll you find it not too too terribly taxing. Um, I am always available if you have questions, if you need something captioned. If you don't want to go through 3C Media Solutions, you can always email us, contact DSS. <clears throat> we have other outlets, other vendors we can use as well um, to take care of that for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then I also want, last but not least, uh, want to do a shameless plug for um, the um, further training and support. So um, next week, go to this training calendar here. Come on. It's not doing it. Okay. Um, next week, we're going to be talking about nothing, apparently. <laughs> oh. <laughs> next week, we're going to be talking about PDFs. So I will just tell you that since this is um, not cooperating. And then um, <clears throat> you can also watch all the trainings that we do. It's probably not going to work again. Um, all the screencasts go up on the site, which you would normally be able to see. So we won't worry about that right now. Um, okay, so at this point, um, if there's no other questions for the group, I'm going to end my screencast. And thank you so much for listening and we'll see you next time.